RV back in storage. I don't know if you can. Uh, let me turn it around. Be a good idea. Back in storage right there. Uh, my daughter helped me yesterday. Um, came back down today and had to do a dump with the tote. And I pulled the battery. Um, I think I've talked to you guys about batteries before, but there might be some new people. And anybody wants to chime in below, please do. But, uh, you know, how to care for batteries, when to remove them and charge them. Um, I know years ago, I would actually leave it in our RV with no solar. And I know now why I always had battery problems because it would, there's certain items, I mean, you can turn everything off in your RV and there's still certain items that are absolutely on in there. Like uh, there's a light switch for the overhead lights that illuminates. Um, there's gas monitoring alarms that, uh, you know, use very little power, but end of the day, they're still draining from your battery. And anything else you may leave on, like I mentioned in the last video, the light, the step light on the Grand Design Reflection 310 RLS. Um, it's a step light, but they call it a patio light on the outside. So first and foremost, make sure your lights are off, especially when you go on battery, but then know what they're called. Um, to me, a patio light would be up higher, uh, but you know, new things change all the time and come out. So, uh, and our actual step light that's on the control panel is um, a light that's inside on the steps going up to the bedroom. So it's little stuff like that. You just, bottom line, you want to make sure that's off. If you're going to be on, you know, exclusively battery for any amount of time, unless you do have solar. Um, and I'm really kind of considering that putting on at least one panel for a minimum to, uh, keep the battery charged up. Um, I do have a small solar panel that, you know, the only thing really it will do is once it's charged, the battery is completely charged. It will maintain it. Um, a lot of these, it's a very small one. I've done a video on it, you know, about five, six months ago. Uh, they're not really meant to charge it up unless you have a bigger panel, I believe. So, again, if you have experience with that, please leave a, uh, a comment below. But, um, again, we had a great trip. Um, the only issue we're having, uh, we had the light on the ram come on that was an oxygen sensor i mentioned in the last video took it into the dealer they did a software upgrade weird thing happened i think we're almost 100 percent positive that there's a certain type of gas we get uh in arizona uh that every time we get it at the specific gas station it triggers the um it basically turns on the check engine light which we know now is the oxygen sensor, which I think has something to do with the fuel. Not positive on that either. Um, you know, there's a lot I'm learning too. So if there's a comment below, but we found out after this time, after we burned off some of that gas, the, the light went out. You know, we had shut it down again, turned it back on. The light didn't come on basically. So we're pretty sure it's attributed to that, to, to that gas. I don't know if it's a different type of additive they're using in their diesel or for possibly a different even slightly different type of diesel diesel number two i know that um, but there's a lot of different variations out there um, you know your bios and different things like that so uh the only other issue now we're having with the ram the uh my father-in-law was actually walking behind the truck and he noticed the uh, license plate they call them tag lights or we're out and started troubleshooting them and they're actually led on the 2019 bighorn 2500 heavy duty which i was surprised by i was like you know they i guess from the manufacturer i believe they come at led because the only person on this before was a fleet person then carmax had it and i doubt fleet would upgrade to led on the license plate that's kind of something uh, you know, like an individual owner would do. So I'm pretty sure they come stock. Couldn't find a lot of ton of information out there on it. Um, and even, even the owner's manual, 
was calling for, um, I think it's an HR 94, something like that bulb, which that's not the bulb, but you know, it's a matter of fact, I have one here. One second guys. Um, this is the bulb. This is an LED. Clearly see it's LED. Um, and again, I, I believe now, correct me if I'm wrong. Once again, power of the community. I believe these came come in stock in the 2019 and the owner manual probably needs updating. Um, looks like it's a Dioko D A I O K O K U. And it's a 4,800 28 water and they're both out. That's the weird thing. Um, it, says in the owner's manual and everything I found online that it essentially is tied to the fuse of the um, turn signals. Not, I'm sorry, not the turn signals, the parking lights. Parking light fuse is fine. Parking lights work fine. So it's tied into that somehow. So now if it is a problem on the line, I don't have that kind of expertise. I do have a small little electrical pen light. I do, I do have, I don't really feel comfortable using, um, did a little tracing with that and it appears that there's no power coming on both those, uh, uh, connectors. So it's just strange. If, you know, if it is, I doubt both lights went out at the same time as what I'm trying to say. So not sure quite what's going on there. I'll keep you posted on that. Um, no, we're just being really cautious about driving at night with it for now. Uh, we're just basically, um, going to take it in. It's going to take a while to get in. And I think with COVID and everything, a lot of the mechanics, uh, the service writer was telling me last time they were down to three mechanics, a pretty deep, fairly good sized shop. Um, and they were pretty much overwhelmed and did a, still did a really good job as far as customer service and, um, travel shooting our last problem and taking care of it. Basically we feel like it's taken care of. If it comes on again. I'll definitely take it back, but I think we're good on the that but the lights i'll let you know um supposedly if it is a problem in the lines um you know it's still covered under warranty thank goodness um or as far as electrical or anything like that um you know if they come back and say well these aren't the stock lights i guess i'm gonna have to uh, haul off on my own and either i don't want to go backwards so i'll have to uh maybe they can give me a estimate how much that'd be to fix at that point. Or, um, I got a feeling with the led, I know on the headlights, there was some issues as far as, um, you have to have a certain type of capacitor. I think it's called that, uh, goes in conjunction to the light that helps the system think it's a regular light. And I don't see that on these the only thing it plugs into is right here if you guys can see that that's that's where it plugs into and there's no capacitor in between and that kind of struck me at first because i know when i upgraded the headlights on here um i believe I'm trying to it's been about a year now i believe it was both the uh low beam and high beam had some type of capacitor that talks back to the motor back to the computer on the truck that says Hey, these are running regular lights. Don't treat them any different way. And with these not having that capacitor, you know, I don't know if that's throwing it off and it's just basically allowing them not to run. It doesn't see it as a regular light. I, I don't know. Fortunately, I don't know enough about it. And I can't find much again online for the 2019, uh, for all the people that do the normal, um, led, headlight videos you know at least on youtube even even doing just regular google searches there's just not a ton out there um i believe one person on the ram forums had something similar but it never got answered so i'll chase this down i'll try and you know post the answer um uh, it's kind of a weird problem one of those ones that uh it's a little frustrating it's not like you can just go out and replace the light and you're good um, so the good news is they're really easy to pull out there. I mean, it's like one bolt 
literally this bolt right here bolts into basically the back side on the bumper there's a little hook thingy and then and if anything's good about this model versus previous years there was a clamp thing i saw in all the videos that you had to remove and it looked a little tricky going back on pretty straightforward coming off so this model just has that that bolt once the bolt's loose you're good it comes pretty much like there's one little clamp you got to get past and it comes right out so it's not it's not a difficult <laughs> removal um and now i'm thinking about it the housing's set up for these things so it must become stock on this model and just no one's had this issue and they haven't made a video about it yet so uh this last trip went really good um got pretty good mileage coming back i think towing was getting about 14 and it's uh pretty straight shot where we came from i was pretty happy with that uh, i didn't speed wise i kept it you know i usually keep it may 60 65 at the most uh pretty much in the slow lane with the trucks and i'll pass occasionally if someone's just crawling you know um but yeah uh, other than that still have the issue with the light above the bed i think i might have uh, found it my actually actually my wife i think found where those wires are and i was i was looking in the wrong spot totally i was looking in the storage under the bed box and it's actually as you pull the slide out in the bedroom it's behind that box uh, where you can see the wires actually coming in and feeding up to the to where they need to go essentially so i i saw some loose wires in there so i need to deal with that um i now have an idea now where to look and kind of troubleshoot and take it from there um it's not too surprising that they ran a short wire um i forget where else we've seen that um you know now that we've had it for a while one of the things that one of the things that we talk about my wife and i you know the plugs on on these are just not thought out they do what they can you know if they i know i realize they have a uh probably an autocad design they're going from and you know they can't deviate too much from that you know at all really probably for many reasons um but they can they sh they could give you a few more plugs like around the um the theater seats they call it you know be nice and we actually added one there and i'll have to um include some pictures of it yeah it's essentially uh another power strip that just makes it easy if you're sitting in those seats um to plug in and then we've also found out I, i'm not sure if i mentioned this before but uh on thanksgiving that you can only put really so many um appliances on on the line by the kitchen which basically the from the the all the kitchen ones from above the um, the sink all the way across, all the way across the counters um, are on one circuit. There's there's many on one circuit is what I'm trying to say. More than we thought they should have done because we were running. Uh, uh, matter of fact, I think I did mention this last video, so I'm kind of repeating. But uh, what's called a wassail maker and um, I think it was the turkey cooker, which is on the outside line, which is what surprised us. They all kind of it, the whole uh, circuit went. So there's there's like too many on that line, um, and then we had to actually use the one under the table. Uh, there's another plug under there, which it's that's good. It's there. Now, that was kind of thought out well, but uh, we actually ended up plugging into it um, for with another. Uh, I think the turkey cooker or something we used over there, and it was fine at that point. Um, so it's little things like that that you learn as you go along. Um, but like I say, other than that, we've been pretty happy with everything. Um, we had probably this last trip was uh, at least two weeks, uh, almost two and a half weeks out, uh, which probably was our longest stint. And we really gave it a good uh, kind of run through and uh, very happy, very comfortable in there. Um, you know, this type of unit, 310 RLS, is really uh it's probably geared for um you know a very small family at a minimum maybe you know just semi-retired people like us um uh, you know maybe uh one or two extra people would probably be fine too but it's it's really geared for that um 
but yeah the we really love the design still uh kind of how we picked it out she um loves the counter space but then there's also we got another little island um that we found that was sort of lightweight that she'll use in cooking so i'll have to include a picture of that um maybe that gives somebody an idea with kind of a similar model that they can get a little more counter space especially when they're cooking and that's that's what she was after so we got that set up we kind of locked the wheels obviously when we're going down the road but she can slide it around where she needs it and then that's kind of cool it's our last rv it was an l-shaped um uh counter and you know you're locked into that it's yeah l l almost u-shaped but you're kind of locked in there's plenty of counter space but you're locked into where that thing is basically uh, so guys, you know, it's, it's going well, you know, if you have any comments below, I only make these videos when I have something to talk about. And, you know, if you're looking for them on a regular basis, it's, you know, it just doesn't happen. I simply don't have the time for that, but when I got the time and enough to talk about, I feel like it might be useful for you guys. I'll make a video. Uh, I think sometimes it can go over a month, <laughs> uh, or more in between but uh yeah there's been occasions where i've cranked them out a little faster but now i have uh my daughter editing so that should help quite a bit too um happy with that so our next trip i always like to mention that too i think is in about uh two months away um we're heading out to spring training which is something we love to do and um you know me i like to try and camp a little longer if i can it just you know i saw something recently on this it just a uh if you go somewhere and it's a fairly long distance, at least a couple hundred miles, and you only stay for a day or two, it kind of, it's a little, it's not rough, but it doesn't feel like you uh, have any time camping, you know, because uh, you're, you're setting everything up, and then you got to tear it back down to leave. So, you know, I would recommend at least two or three days, if not longer, at one spot if you can. Um, just gives you a little more feeling like you're camping. Um you know, getting out a little more. Some people I know they'll they'll move every day and night, and it doesn't bother them. They're all about it, you know. And maybe if you're in a like a class A or something, it's it's well, it definitely would be easier to tear down. I believe if, um, as far as reconnecting, you know, the hitch and things like that. But um, you know, obviously they would have to do that unless they're towing a vehicle. It's kind of a different dynamic, but um, yeah, I think with travel trailers and fifth wheels, you know, you're if you're moving every day, you're pretty much connecting and disconnecting a fair amount. You're going to definitely have that process down. Um, you should also follow a checklist, which we didn't do last time. We need to get back to. We have a checklist that uh, uh, is on this channel, but there's many channels with it. Um, some of the earlier videos has it. I can repost the links to it. Um, for safety, first and foremost, especially if you're brand new. It's really important to follow the checklist and, um, you know, so you, you don't want to miss a step. It's too important. You know, you got uh, safety involved first and foremost. So you definitely, uh, you know, it really starts the night before. And I a lot of times don't do this, but uh, a lot of people recommend the night before. Go ahead and start checking your tires, uh, that type of thing. Because the tires take a while to check. Um, that reminds me, I need to buy, grab my tire pump before I leave. Um, so then, then you kind of move on to other things as you go down the, you know, you, you go to your, uh, hitch and things like that and make sure all that's connected in the right order. But, um, you get the idea. It's, there's definitely a certain order you should follow. Um, that way, you, and the only reason for this, so you don't miss anything. Um, and my wife and I are pretty good about it. She'll kind of have the checklist out when we were doing it. Um. And just, again, making sure each step is followed. Um, and there was times where we missed something, and we were glad we were following it. So, yeah, if you do have a significant other that uh, can help you, that that's that's huge. You know, it's, it's you can definitely do it alone. I've known people out there, seen people out there doing it alone. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it just helps to have a second set of eyes on things, you know. Uh, and maybe it's someone that's not fully involved with the, the towing piece and whatnot. Maybe they're just a guest that's traveling along with you, a family member. But maybe you can just have them, uh, you know, take a look at things and make sure that you're doing them right, too. It never hurts. never hurts. So 
anyhow guys i think we're getting about our normal mark about 20 minutes and um, i'll go ahead and sign off hope everyone's doing well um please leave a comment below if there's anything you, additionally you'd like to see in the videos um and we'll see you next time